Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today in the world beyond the river. We have people to meet, we have uh, places to go to, and we have Kim with us. Always, what do we have over here? A plastic bottle. And money, of course. Always money. This looks like an outhouse, I'm just gonna say it. It might not be. Through the broken glass, dusty shelves, and a forgotten chair. Not a forgotten chair. Oh, we're just going in. All right, we're going in. I suspect there's nobody here. There is nobody here, and there is indeed a forgotten chair. Did you see that? Did you see that? There is. A cold breeze is enough to make the wall planks creak. You see a dark red chair in the dim light of the room. It's only a red chair, just a red chair in an empty shack, with what looked like a dusty bow tie on the shelf. Nothing to see here, right? Says our inland empire. Um, no, there is definitely something to see here. Hey, Kim, where are we? In someone's abandoned shack, on the coast, in Martinez, he looks at you, in Revachol. He's afraid you've forgotten suddenly. Could our suspect be staying here? Here? He looks around. I don't see signs of recent habitation. This place is abandoned. See? Says our suggestion. He doesn't like the vibration from the end of, from the red chair either. I think that's where the word vibe comes from. Does English actually use the word vibration for... No, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, it's just that he doesn't like the vibes. Yeah, I, didn't, I never thought of vibe as the short for vibration, but I think it is. Uh, what's with the red chair? Nothing. It's just a piece of furniture. He looks at the chair gathering dust. Red paint is peeling off of it. Look, it looks like blood. No? Okay, let's move. The paint looks like blood. We got a postcard for Coal City uh, 08. It's a new item. And we will look into that. I think it's just for money. This postcard de depicts a forest of smoke stats releasing fat plumes of smoke into blue cloudless skies. Uh, the tinge of age, the color of old teeth, gives it a sickly look. Written on the back is a single sentence repeated twice. I got out, is the sentence. No addressee. Hmm. And we have a bow tie for extra drama. Which means we don't have to have the necktie anymore. Which in this case actually is a pretty good idea because it talks to us, for one. Also, uh, the bow tie is purple. Also, it's a bow tie. Also, oh, mm, fashion disco Elysium? It's like fashion souls, except it's fashion disco, disco Elysium. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into my, my clothing here. I want... A hat that's good. That hat is good. Looks fantastic with the glasses. But it isn't really what I'm looking for. Unfortunately, I don't really have many options. So I'll go with that. It goes well with the gloves. However, it doesn't go well with the shoes. I like the color of the shoes. It just... it's, it's it, it doesn't work quite well. No, those are my shoes. Those are... yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can't... I can't... I don't... Certainly don't have better shoes. Those are rare. As they would be. Shoes are... Quite, quite something to find. Uh, but I think I'm a little bit better now. A little bit more presentable. Maybe. In the sense that I can see my glasses, really. And also, I I, I wasn't sure about that. Um, Semenese hat? It didn't go well with the outfit. But now, I'm a little bit... Those gloves are atrocious. <laughs> Let's see if... I think I have other, better gloves. Uh, Electrochemistry gloves. For sure. Okay, those look a little bit better. They're fingerless gloves, was it? Sounds of life in the north. A washboard scrums filth from the fabric. There's... A, I, don't, I don't know what that meant, the last sentence, but there's definitely a lot of things in here. The bushes are too thick and thorny to pass through. Cinder blocks, charred, a makeshift fire pit with magazines for lighting. Yep. It's not an uncommon sight. Uh, in places like this, I would say. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. The lieutenant looks down the street. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. 
You can revisit the bench if you ever need to pass time and uh, while... Yeah. Interesting! We're gonna be able to pass time after we solve the murder? I suspect it's because we can solve the murder very fast. Ooh, we got pants. Uh, plus one Kingdom of Conscience? Inter Interisolati Trousers is the... I didn't know Kingdom of Conscience was even a skill. I seem to recall that, but... What do you mean, Kingdom of Conscience? That's... Seriously, I, I, I can't find it. It's not a skill. It doesn't look like it is. Tailored trousers in light brown, moderate in every aspect. They're absolutely unremarkable. In other words, perfect. Yeah, for an 80s person. Not for us. Yeah, it didn't do anything here. What do I have that's minus? Did you see something go minus over here? Did it change? Moralist pants! That's what it is! Oh my god. <laughs> they look pretty cool, actually. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had trousers like those, but those are just normal. Uh, whatever the name of that thing is. The, the name of the fabric. You see dust-covered linens, dried tulips on a bed, I think. Because I was talking about this type of fabric. What else do we have? White curtains have been drawn shut. No looking in. A wedding stone, well worn and covered in rust. Oh, Kim, I don't mean to talk to you. I, I just mean to look into what that is. Construction material. Whoever planned to build this house left in a hurry. And we got a little bit of money. Up rock. Says one of those kids. Is this the poor part of town? Abby, don't call Adji Gale. Are you drinking that? Asks one of them. And just money. Very different soundtrack out here. Let's have a chat with this guy. Don't go another guy. There was a, an unshaven man with a, ro a ruddy nose. He narrows his eyes at you as if in recognition and then turns his head away. The noxious odor emanating from the drunken man is strong and familiar. Don't you call her, you hear? Don't call Abigail. Who's Abigail? Oh, Abigail. Don't you fucking call Abigail. He draws out a disgusting snort and then mumbles, waving a finger in your general direction. Abigail is his wife or girlfriend. Chances are she's gone. Calling her wouldn't make it any better or worse. You're not going to get anything from this guy, says our rhetoric. He's too drunk. Yeah, sounds like that's the case. Where am I? What is this place? The man hiccups and then mumbles something unintelligible. Tell me about your friends, I'm going to point to the others. He glares at you. Oh, don't you fucking call her, you hear me? His voice trembles with every word, becoming ever weaker. Abigail, he whimpers in the end. I'm just gonna walk away. Don't call Abigail, he whimpers softly, his voice trailing off into nothingness. Hey, Tequila! A 30-something man clad in a two-piece licra that's trademarked uh, I did not know it was trademarked. Uh, I thought it was... Just, that is... I am learning things. That's a word from my childhood. Because when I was a kid, people mentioned type of fabrics. Including those trousers that I was talking about. Um, the Portuguese word for that would be sarja. But of course, in, that has to be translated into English. Um, it might be similar in Spanish. But liquor is definitely one of the uh, one of the types of materials that uh, I had, uh, like training trou trousers made out of, um, and I did not know it was trademarked, or at least I I figured somebody came up with it and trademarked it at any one time, but I didn't know it was the, that. But there it is, cool. I did not know that. Cool. Um, it's tracksuit pants, um, or tracksuit. Let's see. In a two-piece liquor tracksuit, puts down his pilsner, which is. I have no idea what that is. And extends his hand in greeting. Good to see ya! 
How's business? How's the old reality situation treating you? I'm gonna shake his hand. So what's happening? He pit. Yeah, I like his voice actor. He picks up his beer. Uh, wait, tequila? Yeah, tequila sunset. How are the um high concept reality based adventures proceeding? I think that's the main voice actor. Actually, he's just making a different voice. He's the uh, he's our character's voice actor. The one who talks like this. He also voices a. I say our character. I figured it is our character, uh, the Inland Empire, or one of the Furies. Anyway, um, <laughs> the high concept reality based adventures <laughs> proceeding. He says it like it's obvious. Obviously, your name, like you call someone Billy Br Brunel. Maybe. Or leader of the fourth street gang. Good. These people know your true name, says our Inland Empire. It looks like it has preceded you, Mr. Sunset. More on that later. Uh... Reality, it makes me aggressively sad. I know what you mean. Sitting around with these bums who really get to know the nitty gritty of reality. And it isn't good. He looks at his buddies with mock appreciation. Things aren't going super well for Idiot Doomspiral either. Haven't found those keys yet. Ever won that great piece of ours back? No word for my business, buddies. Takes a sip from his beer. This guy's your buddy buddy, says our suggestion. You feel it immediately. You belong to an organization, a fraternity of drunks. Um, I'm not sure he's actually being real when he says that. He's just being insightful, not maybe, because he knows of stories like that. Um, have you seen a red-haired woman named Ruby around here lately? Can't really remember seeing any women after losing my keys. It's a touchy sub subject or topic, says our electrochemistry. It's a good thing I have the gloves I have on. He hasn't gotten laid in ages. He really has no idea how this who this Ruby is, sire, says our drama. What do you guys do around here? They are saving the world. He looks at his comrades. Please, oh, that's the please don't don't call Abigail is his name. Please don't call, don't call, don't call. Begs the man in the pipe. Okay, we're drinking, we're drinking alcohol. That's what we're doing. I tried to save the world once a long time ago with enterprise, creativity, and willpower, but that didn't work out. So now it's a pirate's life for me. Uh, what is a tequila sunset? You keep saying it. It is you. You're a tequila sunset. How do, how do you know this? We've met before. Don't you remember? No. Ha! <laughs> he takes a sip from his beer. Joe wants to know how tequila sunset came to be. Tequila. Oh, that tequila sunset. Mr. Sunset is the, uh, I was called Mr. Sunset. I did not comment on it because I didn't know what to think of, but I think our suggestion called her, called us, somebody called us, um, Mr. Sunset, but we are Tequila Sunset. Something ominous there. For some reason, the name Tequila fills me with foreboding. Maybe I shouldn't learn what it means. No, no, I should, I should. I got, I got the, the things. It's, it's fine. And I got Kim, so it's, it's all good. Go ahead. Mm, let me take a sip to moisten up my cords. He takes a big sip and then begins. Tequila sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday. And my tequila sun, and by tequila sunset I mean you, the man, the myth. Uh, wait, did we meet on Friday? No, wait, wait, more important, was I alone? Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. He takes another sip and then continues. You got here on Friday to solve a case, hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz, because as far as I know, all you did was get priest drunk. Word on the street is you went around to local hot hostels telling people that you're... Your police officer, and that it would be really fucked up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of him. That's that's pretty high concept, if you ask me. Your partner's brow. Oh, that's a missing apostrophe there. Your partner's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as he can. Um. Please continue. 
It was late last su- Saturday night when we and the union of moribund alcoholics were getting our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this. We get our drink on 24-7. Makes everything warm and glowy. I trust you know the feeling. One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs. Do you remember the sound of wood cracking? Asks our perception. The billboard. Then it's asking of me, obviously. Naturally, loud noises spike the interests of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's just a reality when... Uh... Naturally. Anyway... There uh, was a brief silence, a gasp of silence, if you will, followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening toward the coast at top speed. Sounded like someone jumped a canal. We grabbed our brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. What we saw was a sight to behold. A beat-up police carriage containing news right there on the beach. You revved the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs. The time has come! So naturally, being the curious cat as I am, I uh, asked what time had come, and you, which you replied, The time has come for tequila sunset! The end of all things! Uh, say nothing, it's more dignified that way, probably. After which you, your reality contracted. You jammed the pedal, plowed right off the jetty, and threw the ice. We ran towards ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, covered in seaweed and shit, like some kind of sea monster. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach, crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. It's too late to get in there now, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. Recognizing a brother in need, we offered our condolences and invited you to party with us which you naturally agreed to. We asked about the whole tequila sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now, and insisted that we all call you that from then on. Okay, the, the important aspect of it is already passed, and that's how this game does its own uh, foreboding. It is it uh, backloads it, which is a very, very good, very, very good game, um, game writing technique. I find that it doesn't work quite as well in books. Uh, it does work well, very well in games, especially if they are narrated. But um, because I'm I'm reading, for me as a reader, it, it or reading it out loud for me as a reader, it works the same as if it were voice voice acted. You see, the problem with saying important thing at the beginning uh, is that by the time you're done with a whole series of lines, um, you've kind of forgot or you don't have the beginning bits as present in your mind as you have the last ones, uh, and that's uh. That can be a serious problem in 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 normal writing because if you're in- delivering a lot of uh, important information that you do want a player to keep in mind right at the beginning uh, of a dialogue in an RPG, um, that that is a problem. You shouldn't do that. You should always do it the other way around. Um, also, because well, the real writing is di- like that. Journalistic writing is the opposite, where you need to put the most important thing at the top, but that's because of the way people read journals and, and just newspapers, or not even newspapers, just, you know, news and whatnot, websites and whatnot. But every other kind of writing is the opposite. You always start with the nonsense, and you end with the really, really important stuff. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not quite like that, but in this case, the game is deliberate, and it's done this before, it's deliberately trying to uh, hide what matters here. The crying doesn't matter, I don't think. It's this one. Yeah. The time has come for Tequila Sunset. The end of all things. And I was crying. Which is... I was crying because my badge and uniform, maybe, maybe because my badge and uniform were in the car. But is, is that the reason I was crying? I think that's the most important aspect. We don't have enough information to know where this is going. Uh, or where, or why this happened, but... Wait, so is Tequila Sunset an event, or a name? 
I'm not sure. I think you were. You were the event. Tequila Sunset. You know, as opposed to Tequila Sunrise, which is long gone. I don't actually know what Tequila Sunrise is. My real name is Harry. Actually, a Harry Harrier, but still. No, that's just what your mother called you. Your real name is Tequila Sunset. Just embrace it, brother. How long did we party for? Hours? It was an all-night drink-a-thon. Then, th uh, then, at some point, I think you, it was Sunday morning, you got belligerent and wanted to talk about Rivasholian women. Belligerent here means fighting. Uh, and not just here, that's what the word means. I don't know why... It, I got belligerent and wanted to talk about women, because usually I get belligerent and wanted to steal your stuff or something, or punch you in the face. But I don't... It might be... It might mean... It might be meant as, uh... Hmm. Like, rowdy, maybe? Which sort of fits, but anyway. How they're beautiful and also whores and so on. That does sound... It must have been Ruby. This must be about Ruby. This must be about Ruby. I don't understand. This is our ex-something that we got at the beginning of the game. This it could be... I don't know. Anyway, he says, How they're beautiful and also whores and so on. And how one of them fucked you real bad. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen, got up, and left without saying anything. Wow, that's quite a story, says Kim. Yeah, I bet the killer's a fucking legend around the precinct. You must be proud to work with him. If you only knew, says Kim, not betraying anything. Uh, did I tell you anything specific about this person that fucked me? You were pretty vague about it, but you kept saying you got fucked real hard, and that's all been, f and that we've all been fucked too. Please don't open that door, says our Inland Empire. Shut up, Inland Empire. I, anyway. Rosemary's talking for the first time. No one's fucked me. I do the fucking round here, says Rosemary. Abigail says, don't call Abigail. It seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. If I had to guess, I'd say you were still walking through some, some shit. Did I mention losing anything else? Besides your gun and your badge, you said something about your hope or heart or something. To be honest, the details are a little hazy. I, in retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage, too. That's a big one. Did I say anything about my colleagues? You told us that they were a bunch of fucking losers whose main interest was cramping your style. It's more like you were cramping theirs, says our empathy. I don't deserve this. Empathy? What is this? I got my own empathy turned against me. What? Anyway, uh, he says, Idiot Doom Spiral is his name, by the way. I didn't read it. No specifics, though. It was more about you that night. You were the star of the show. Did I say anything about the case? Yeah, you said it was no biggie and that you'd solved it in no time. He takes a strong quaff of his beer. Which is not beer, it's tequila. Or is it? No, I just got mixed it up. It is uh, beer. And that you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. Solo now? Did I have a partner? Hmm. Like a police partner. Kim says, A lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. It's not meant as a joke, says our empathy. He's sorry for the hermit cop. I know. We know We know that. <laughs> we know. Uh, did we talk about uh, politics? Yeah, you kept talking about how the coal mine owners were fucking us all over just like that women fucked that woman fucked you. I didn't agree with you, by the way. The spectral hand of the market makes sure everyone gets exactly what they deserve. He takes a long sip of beer in a line that under normal circumstances I would think is meant a hundred percent sarcastically. And also the reference specifically to the spectral hand of the market means he's at least passingly aware of neoliberal ideology to be able to critique it, if it is indeed meant as sarcasm. If it isn't, then I don't 
I, I honestly have never heard anybody... I mean, there's a lot of defenders of neoliberalism, for sure, but I've never heard anybody defend neo neoliberalism passingly, or in by passingly, I mean unprovoked, uh, although this is not necessarily unprovoked. It sort of is, because, I mean, he's he's being defensive a little bit, so I, yeah, it sort of is. Uh, it sort of isn't. But, yeah, the spectral hand of the market. Because that's the thing. The The principle is that the market as an as a as a uh a, i suppose like a it's a selfless entity or rather an entity that doesn't really there's nobody at the helm of the market uh, theoretically um in practice the the people with money are at the helm of the market the, the money for, to do advertising and to you know invest and all this sort of stuff uh but it's still it's still a vague enough that you can consider it to be you know, a vague and hence spectral sort of um, no entity and it's just the collective decisions of the public uh, and emphasis there on the word decisions um, to buy what they believe is good and to not buy what they don't believe is good and hear what they deserve irre it like it, it irrevocably irrevocably that's not the word that I mean to say. What do I mean to say? Inevitably, that's the one. Uh, in the exactly what they deserve here is inevitably seen as a um uh retroactive it's it's this is retroactive in the sense that uh like imagine you make a company to make i don't know toilet paper um cuz whatever it doesn't matter uh, and you don't do you don't make good decisions and you lose your investment right um so you didn't deserve to get paid back for that investment and that's why it's retroactively and it's not it's not decided a priori that you deserve to be successful it's it's so it's always very flaky to look at the spectral hand of the market as a means to deciding who deserves what um it's let alone when you actually start considering things like people who with disabilities people with uh, the people that are of discriminated groups uh, maybe because of their race, because of their gender, because of where they were born. Maybe they didn't have an inheritance. Maybe they're LGBTQ+. Plus. Maybe they, I don't know, maybe they're foreigners. Whatever. There's always so many, or it's just the education that they were, like, that they, that they had. Because they were born in the wrong part of town or something like that. Um, and, and, and so assigning that as a what you deserve is is just always cruel it's it's just inevitably cruel once you start digging into it but from a abstract position you can actually th that's a point that people make but that's the thing it's always from an abstract position and i don't this doesn't this doesn't even feel like propaganda <laughs> this doesn't even feel like he's saying the things that 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 are uh said in defense of neoliberalism does you know? Doesn't feel like he's spouting propaganda. It just feels like he's. He, I mean, which I said I I am taking this seriously. It evidently is a critique or satire in this case of the of neoliberalism. But that's because we are playing a game and we know that it is because this these are the words written by the writers. Uh, but as a character, if you were to say this, this would still feel like satire. It's be, because this game actually does it quite a lot of times, and the reason why that is is because the the. The writers are uh, sometimes very in your face in the satire that they write, which is, I suppose, it, it doesn't really take away from the quality of the game. I just feel it's not very common, and uh, and so I have it, it's kind of tricky for me sometimes to take some characters as as uh, not being sarcastic, which in this case I don't think he is meant to be sarcastic, although he feels like it. Anyway, did I get? Uh, did you get a read on what kind of cop I was? You kept on apologizing for being such a bad cop and for the damage you've inflicted on everyone around you. You also kept pausing to knock the heel off your hands against your temples, saying stupid, stupid, stupid. And I got hiccups. I also got no more time, though, because we're out of it. Uh, so uh, we're going to click on that in the next episode. For right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Disco Elysium. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.